Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, last week, the Drudge Report featured an article with a striking headline, quote, the world's most ancient Christian communities are being destroyed and no one cares. This sentiment was expressed in no uncertain terms yesterday in an event in my district at St. John's the Beloved in McLean, Virginia. People from the round, the greater Washington, D.C. area gathered to hear directly from five senior Syrian Christian leaders, part of a delegation from the war-ravaged country and the first of its kind that I know to visit the U.S. since the hostilities began. These men will speak at the Heritage Foundation at 1 p.m. today and will meet with members of Congress tomorrow. Their story and that of their communities bears telling not only to policymakers, but to the American church at large, for they represent the very cradle of Christendom. They spoke movingly of their identity as Syrian Christians with ancient roots predating the Apostle Paul. Today, these communities face violence, kidnapping, sexual assault, displacement, and more. According to the Barnabas Fund, which is hosting this delegation, an estimated 600,000 Christians in Syria have already fled the country or lost their lives. Of course, general violence plagues Syria, but this ancient Christian community finds itself targeted by Islamist elements in the country, including a significant number of foreign jihadists who have flocked to the battlefield. Several messages emerged at the talk yesterday, but one held particular relevance for the faith community in America. The Syrian Christian leaders made a plea for engagement from the church in the West. Specifically, they sought for American churches to adopt specific Syrian churches, to commit to praying on their behalf and adv advocating for them when possible. The need is great, but so too is the opportunity. The plight of Christians in Syria, while horrific, is in some respects a similar story. Time and again, Syrian Christians remark that they fear the fate that befell their brethren in Iraq, where hundreds of thousands fled after being targeted by rival Islamist groups. Today, Iraqi's Christian population has fallen from as many as 1.4 million in 2003 to roughly 200,000 today. In fact, throughout the Middle East, Christian communities are increasingly under siege and imperiled. Christianity risks being ripped from the very fabric of the Middle East when for centuries and where for centuries it has been part of the rich tapestry of that region. Will we permit it to happen on our watch? Will we answer their pleas for help or will their cries fall on deaf ears? I pray, I pray it's not too late.